President is, uh, is taking a tour of the facility and uh, the owner of this great establishment that has, uh, Ellicott Dredge, has been here since the 1900s and Peter Bowie is taking him around this great place that employs over 120 of our fellow Marylanders and does a lot of exports and, and great and important stuff. Uh, we're really excited to be able to welcome President Obama here to Baltimore. Under President Obama's leadership, our nation has created jobs for 31 consecutive months in a row. And because of President Obama's efforts and because of the hard work of people across every sector in our country, uh, we have been able together to drive down national unemployment to its lowest rate in more than four years. And that's the sort of leadership we need to move us forward because the most important job we create is always the next job. And there is no progress without jobs. So here in Maryland, we subscribe to the common sense that President Obama believes in, which is that we need a balanced approach. We need to be able to make the tough cuts, but we need to be able to make also the right investments in a modern economy that creates jobs. Innovating, educating, and rebuilding. We're joined here today by some great people who carry our voices and our cause with them into the halls of the United States Congress. Our senior United States Senator, Barbara A. Mikulski. Our terrific minority leader and great congressman, Steny Hoyer. We're also joined by Congressman John Sarbanes. And the mayor of the great city of Baltimore, Stephanie Rawlings-Blake. There's another gentleman who's in this uh, distinguished delegation, and that is our former Secretary of Transportation, who is now the Deputy Secretary of Transportation for the whole United States, John Picari. John, thank you for your good work. And I regret that I have but one cabinet to give to our country. But John's doing a, an outstanding job uh, there at the Department of Transportation. Here in our state, uh, like President Obama, we believe that if we want better results, we have to make better choices. And the President's going to be talking about things that our federal government is doing better to accelerate the permitting process so that projects that support jobs in our country can move on a fast track and move to completion. Yesterday in Annapolis, I signed on your behalf our state capital budget, which supports 43,000 jobs this year, building new schools, uh, uh, investing in our infrastructure, our water and wastewater infrastructure. We have done uh, some pretty impressive things here in our state because we know that it's not going to happen by itself. We have to, if we want a better tomorrow, we have to make that tomorrow happen. So uh, look, it's not a Democratic or Republican idea, it's an American idea. It was true for our parents and grandparents, it's true for us. Uh, in order to create jobs, a modern economy requires modern investments. That's what we're doing in Maryland, and that's what President Obama is doing at the national level. Progress is a choice. Job creation is a choice. And we are so very, very glad that uh, the President has come here today to highlight the most important cause of all for our country, which is growing and expanding the ranks of an ever more diverse and ever more upwardly mobile middle class. That defines an America that's moving forward. Thank you all very, very much. Ladies and gentlemen, to introduce the President of the United States, please welcome Duncan McTaggart.
Hi, my name is Duncan, and I work here at Ellicott Dredges as an engineer. I came to this area to go to the University of Maryland at College Park. I met my wife, Lisa, here, and we stayed to raise our two children, Brandon and Andrew. Ellicott Dredges makes digging and pumping equipment for the mining industry, amongst other things. We've been here in Baltimore since 1885. A lot of history. A lot of people have built their lives on American industry, and Ellicott remains at the heart of that. In fact, we've been growing rapidly since I arrived here five years ago, adding at least 50 jobs right here at this facility. A lot of that is due to exporting. My, my work personally is on products for export, mostly. Uh, and we use machinery that we build right here in Baltimore. Uh, we're involved in projects all over the world. We never know what the customer's going to want next, but we're ready for them, and we aim to do a good job. And I know my coworkers are highly skilled, dedicated, hardworking people, and I have confidence that we are building products here together that the world wants and needs for sustainable growth of infrastructure. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Ellicott Dredges, I'm very proud to introduce to you the 44th President of the United States, Mr. Barack Obama. Hello, Baltimore. Wonderful to see all of you. Uh, give Duncan a big round of applause for the great introduction. I want to thank uh, all of you for the, the warm welcome, the, the, the great hospitality. Uh, and, and I tell you what, I'm going to return the favor by hosting your Super Bowl champion, Baltimore Ravens, at the White House for some. China room. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> uh, I, I want to thank your CEO, Peter Bowie, uh, and your plant manager, uh, Robert Kroom, uh, and your entire team for showing me around this great facility. Uh, I was told that one of your customers once named a dredge after President Clinton. So I've got my fingers crossed. <laughs> Never had a dredge named after me. So I'm looking at you. Uh, look, looking, at, uh, looking forward to that. Uh, I've come here today uh, to talk about our single most important priority as a country right now, and that is reigniting the true engine of our economic growth, and that is a rising, thriving middle class. And, <laughs> and as I said in my State of the Union address uh, this year, th that's our North Star. That's what we have to focus on. That's what has to guide all our efforts. And, and, and we've got some great people who are championing uh, middle class families every single day. First of all, your outstanding governor. Come on. Arm on down. Your outstanding mayor, Madam Mayor. You've got some outstanding members of Congress led by your senior Senator Barbara Mikulski. And uh, your own leader in the House of Representatives, uh, he is doing a great job uh, every single day, and he loves this state. Uh, Steady Hoyer. Yeah. Uh, so, so we've got uh, just uh, some extraordinary folks here. Uh, every, uh, let me make sure I've, I've, uh, Elijah Cummings is here. But, but more importantly, uh, uh, Elijah's mom is here. And, 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 and you know, we are so proud of, of uh, Elijah, but uh, his mom apparently uh, prays for me every day, so I'm very grateful for her uh, as well. And the 
All of these, all of your members of Congress, every single day are working, fighting on, behalf, uh, on your behalf in terms of making sure that we're growing an economy that creates outstanding middle class jobs. That's the, that's the challenge that we should be rallying around every single day. And, and I know it can seem frustrating sometimes when it seems like Washington's priorities aren't the same as your priorities. I know it often seems like folks down there are more concerned with their jobs than with yours. Uh, others may get distracted by chasing every fleeting issue that passes by, but the middle class will always be my number one focus, period. Your jobs, your families, your communities. That's why I ran for president. That's what drives me every day as I step into the Oval Office. That's what I'm going to keep fighting for uh, over the next four years. And, and, and that's why I'm so proud uh, to have uh, these partners. You know, the, uh, you know, John Sarbanes, I say for last because, um, you know, Congressman Sarbanes, he himself is doing a great job, but when I first came in, his father uh, was uh, one of the people who I so admired in the Senate. Uh, he had served for a long time. Uh, and I remember uh, just a conversation that we had, he probably doesn't remember it, but he, when I, I asked him, I came, paid him a visit, and I asked him, what, what's your advice? He says, just keep in mind the people who sent you. Because here in Washington, sometimes people get distracted. But you're here to work on behalf of uh, your constituencies. And if you stick to that, you're going to be just fine. And that's what's happening here in Maryland. You know, under Governor O'Malley's leadership, Maryland has won back almost 100% of the jobs that were claimed by the recession. So, so, so you might not know, uh, you might not know it if you were just watching the news and you're exposed to all these partisan battles and brinksmanship in Washington. But the truth is there are a lot of reasons to be optimistic about where this country's headed, especially after all that we've been through over the past several years. And that's got to encourage us to roll up our sleeves and work together and take on the challenges that are still holding back the economy and holding down working families. Now, the good news is, in a little over three years, businesses like this one have created more than 6.5 million new jobs. And while our unemployment rate is still too high, it's the lowest it's been since 2008. That's good news. But that's not enough, because we've also got to create even more good middle class jobs, and we've got to do it even faster. You know, corporate profits have skyrocketed at an all time high. Now we've got to make sure that middle class wages and incomes are going up too, because families uh, all across America haven't seen their take home pay rise for nearly a decade. That's the next phase. It's good that companies are profitable. I want you to be profitable. I want you to be taking a little more home in your paycheck. Our housing market is healing. But that's not enough. Now we've got to help more families stay in their homes or refinance to take advantage of these historically low interest rates. Our deficits are shrinking at the fastest rate in decades. That's the truth. That's worth the applause, sure. Because you, you, you wouldn't always know that listening to folks in Washington, but the fact is our deficits are going down faster than they have gone down in decades. But we still have to create a budget that is smart and doesn't hurt middle class families or harm our critical investments into our future. Now Barbara Mikulski is on the Appropriations Committee. She's fighting hard to make sure that you know, this sequester that is slowing down growth and we're starting to see growth slowing down because of furloughs and uh, cuts in defense spending and a whole bunch of stuff that wasn't well thought through, we've got to make sure that we've got a budget that doesn't push our economy back down. We need a budget that pushes our economy back up. The American auto industry is thriving. American energy is booming. American ingenuity in our tech sector has the potential to change the way we do almost everything. And thanks to the grit and determination of the American people, 
We've been able to clear away the rubble of the crisis. We're now poised for progress, but our work is not done and our focus cannot drift. We've got to stay focused on our economy and putting people back to work and raising wages and bringing manufacturing back to the United States of America. That has to be what we're thinking about every single day.
to sell driving equipment right out of this shop all over the world. You maintain your quality. You built a sales force that travels everywhere, out hustling the competition in search of new business. All that hard work's paid off. Today, this company, you, have sold equipment to more than 100 different countries. You've made new investments here at home. You employed more than 200 people in Baltimore and Wisconsin and Kansas. And over the past few decades, during some of the tough times for our workers, you were able to keep building equipment, stamped with those three proud words, made in America, and you're selling around the world. stuff here in America, but it also means we're all making it here in America when, when you do what you're doing. And this is a great example. And the good news is more and more companies are following your example. After shipping jobs for 10 years, our manufacturers have added more than 500,000 jobs over the past three years. Ford is bringing jobs back from Mexico. Caterpillar is bringing jobs back from Japan. Placing plants in other countries like China, Intel, which is making the chips in your smartphone, and your iPad, and your, all, all these gizmos that everybody's holding up right now. <laughs> Intel's opening its most advanced plant right here at home, right here in America. Washington should be helping these kinds of success stories take root all across the country. That's why we boosted, my administration boosted our efforts help businesses export more of their goods and services. That's why we signed trade agreements that will protect American workers, but open up new markets and support tens of thousands of good-paying jobs. That's why we reauthorized the Export-Import uh, Bank. And we are proud to have the bank's chairman right here, Fred Hopper. Uh, he's here this, this afternoon. He's, he's helping this company as we speak sell more goods overseas. And so today, exports are at an all-time high. We are selling more stuff around the world. We've added more than a million export supported jobs since I took off.
while back what I did was uh, I ordered uh, everybody who was involved in, in a permitting projects to speed up the permitting process for 50 different big projects all across the country. For the, from the Tappanzee Bridge in New York to the Port of Charleston in South Carolina. And we've been able to, in some cases, cut uh, approval times from seven years down to a year. Right? So we've made progress. Today, I'm directing agencies across the government to do what it takes to cut timelines for breaking ground on major infrastructure projects in half. And what that will mean is that construction workers get back on the jobs faster. It means more money going back into the local economies. And it means more demand for outstanding dredging equipment that is made right here in Baltimore.
train bus, uh, a woman here, uh, Myrna LeBaire. Uh, Myrna LeBaire, where's Myrna? Where's Myrna? Where's Myrna? Where's Myrna? Myrna LeBaire. Myrna has been at Ellicott for, for more than 50 years. Now that means she, that means she started uh, when there were no child labor laws, because she it was clearly illegal. <laughs> she was about four or five, and they started putting her to work, put a broom in her hand, you know. Uh, but when, when somebody asked uh, Myrna what, what lesson she learned, after 50 years working at the same company, she said, be honest, be helpful, accept your mistakes and improve upon them, be good to people, keep a good sense of humor, have the best work ethic possible, Handle the good times and get over the bad. That's a pretty good recipe for success right there. That's who we are. That's who we are. Thank you. I mean, that, that pretty much sums up everything. That's who we, that's who, who we like to, to understand. We are as Americans. We're honest and helpful. We work hard. We're good to others. We handle the good times and we get over the bad times. And we keep that in mind. All right, if we just all keep Myrna's advice in mind, keep plugging away, keep fighting, we'll build, uh, we'll build, build an even better America than we got right now. And, 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 and I know, I know you're gonna, we, we can pray too. We'll add that in. We work to create more jobs, if we give every American the tools that they need uh, for those jobs, if we make sure that hard work pays off and that responsibility is rewarded, then once again, America is going to be a place where you can always make 50 bucks, and we'll all prosper together.